When their country asked them to fight, they said yes. They fought for our freedom. Now, they're fighting for their own survival. Wartime veterans have paid a terrible price for their patriotism. Many are left homeless and helpless after fighting for our country. These heroes need our help. The Gary L. Miles Veterans Facility was created to help bring these heroes home and give them the comfort and support they deserve. When you make your generous contribution of $14.99, $19.99, $29.99, or your best gift every month, you are helping our veterans have a warm, safe place to sleep with a roof over their heads, enjoying all the comforts of home. Thank you for your generous contribution. Say it again. I have neuropathy in my, in my feet, in my in real bad pain in my feet. And while you were talking on the pulpit, the pain just went away. And I... <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Look at this. Y'all look at this. Y'all look at this. No cane. No cane. Oh, y'all, why y'all, why y'all? God bless you. This is your host, Pastor Marvin Miles, pastor of the International Gospel Center, coming to you from our live temple. Oh, my God. Oh, God has blessed us tremendous. And, and I just want to give a shout out to all of those that planted a seed. You have really touched my heart. You have been a blessing to the International Gospel Center. I'm telling you right now, I just want to put it out there. Many of you have sold uh, a seed of 6,000, 5,000, 1,000, 500, 200, 100, $5, $20. Whatever you sent, I'm telling you right now, thank you. I'm not, I'm not like those other guys, amen, that's not gonna come back and say, thank you for your, your time, your energy, and your effort to help us reach one of our initial goals and the temple is gorgeous. Everybody is just raving about what God has done and it's worth just coming to look at what favor looks like. <laughs> Glory to God, we got the favor of God. So listen, I'm giving a pan out so you can see kind of what we have done on the inside of the temple. And then uh, I'm gonna pray for your individual needs, but right now, I want you to get this word. Take a look at this. Spirit. That, that the revamp that we are a part of right now is not just for the decor of the church or the kitchen or the basement or a new elevator. But I told you that the Lord was going to revamp you. Amen. Come on, somebody. For months now, I've been talking to my wife. I told her I want a comprehensive plan, a strategic plan, a holistic plan, for the women of this house in every area, no woman left behind, no child left behind. Do y'all hear me? At the same time, the Lord, Spirit of God spoke to me concerning that. He talked about the men. I've been talking to 
the men's committee, that I wanted a holistic plan for the men. And on yesterday, it is obvious it is the beginning of our men becoming whole. Man, that's real weak. That is real weak. In Genesis chapter 2, and looking at verse 18, something very, very powerful. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. And I will make a help meet for him. It is obvious that God has taken an assessment of men and has come up with conclusions that are very accurate that men do not do alone good. He said it is not good for men to be alone. But we see how the enemy has gotten in to bring disorder to what God has set in order. I submitted to the men on yesterday that God had given me five principles for men, protector, provider, promoter, priest, and prophet. Whether you are married or single, the Spirit of the Lord says these are qualities that you have to possess to become the man of God that God wants you to become. Can I get an amen right there? And so I believe that the enemy has used certain tactics to keep our women into captivity because of the disorder of the man. What are you talking about, man of God? We know what the ultimate plan of the enemy is. It's found in John 10.10. 10. It talks about that the enemy comes to do what? And destroy. It is, it is, it is specific. That's his plan. So part of that process, the enemy wants to keep the women captive as found in 1 Samuel chapter 30 when it deals with David and Ziklag and, and the women being taken away. But notice, ladies, notice men, that David could not do anything until he got himself together first. <laughs> men, we can't do anything outside of following the Holy Spirit to bring our women out of captivity. And you say, well, what type of captivity? This is not, David was a physical captivity. But the devil is not trying to lock 
women up in prisons, it's a different fight he's trying to lock women up in the prison of their own mind. Oh my God. Oh y'all, 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 come on and talk to me. Oh, this is deep. What, what, what are you saying, man of God? Uh, uh, how you think about your own self, ladies. Whether it's beauty or brains. I heard something that, that Jeff said. He said that I didn't think I was good enough. He wasn't in no physical, locked up, behind bars prison. That was a prison in his own mind that the enemy planted a seed and said, you're not light enough, you're not big enough, you're not tall enough. And that's what the enemy has used. He has used, ladies, your age, your stage, your weight. He tried to use all of these things so you don't think good about yourself. But I'm here to serve notice on that devil today. that you are good enough where you are right now. Somebody, get, a lady, somebody give God a praise. Oh, oh my God. You're pretty enough. You don't need no makeup. When you already got self-confidence. Oh my God, y'all better help me. He tries to use your past against you. And because of not being covered by a godly man, my sisters, you will work two jobs to try to replace one job from a dead beat that is not following the laws of God. And it becomes a yoke about your neck. And then you, you, you start forming ideas about men that are not godly. That all men are the same. But I'm here to circle. Do I got a witness for one of my sisters that have seen some godly men up in here and you can't put all of us in the same category? All men is not like that joker that broke your heart. The devil is a liar. I, I know some stand-up men that take care of their families, that take care of their children, that go to work every day. Can the men stand up and give God a holler? Oh, shata neda ba shata, bra ba shana ba shata. Oh, push on somebody. Say, oh, you get delivered today. You coming out? You coming out? You coming out? It don't matter how you look. It don't matter about what your daddy did. It don't matter what your mama did. It don't matter what your grandpappy them did. If any man, if any man, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Woo, glory. Mentally, Always looking to be affirmed. Am I good enough? My mama said I wasn't good enough. Daddy wasn't there to say anything. And it has now left Avoid. The devil truly wants to take your joy. 
But as much as he wants ladies to take your joy, he knows that if I can get to the man, I don't have to get to the child. I don't have to get to the wife. If I get to the man, I can destroy the whole family in one swoop. Oh, y'all, come on, talk to me. Why y'all patty kicking? Is that, do you believe that or not? And the Bible is clear. The devil is after the man. Look at this. This is revelatory. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. Just go one chapter down and I want you to see something very powerful. And God says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman. Women of God, do you have you realized why you pray so much? Do you know why you, you sacrifice so much? The Bible says that I have put hatred between holy women of God and the devil himself. That's why you go into war. That's why you don't need nobody to help you magnify God. That's why you don't need a, a, a prayer partner. You don't need none of that. All you need to do is just raise your hand and begin to lift up the name of God and mascara start running down your nose. You don't care. Can I get an amen from the women up in here? You go for broke. That's why your retreats are just nut crazy. That's why you run around hotels and they think you y'all on acid or something because there is a natural inclination to hate what the enemy is trying to do to your family, to your home, to your children, to your mama, to your daddy, to your husband. Can I get an amen? Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Somebody give the Lord a praise. Oh, I want you to touch three people around you and say, it's time to stand up. It's time to stand up. Oh, glory. Man, oh my, what is this today? Oh my God. Oh, the word of the Lord is rich. And I had no sorrow. It says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman. Watch this. And between thy seed. Watch this. And her seed. Between thy seed and her seed. Watch this. You can miss it if you're not watching. It says, it shall bruise thy head. Ah, uh, ain't nothing too much revelatory about that, man. Of God, no, you got to read the rest. And thou shalt bruise his, not the woman, his heel. The problem is the woman does not have a seed. The woman has an egg. The man has the seed. The man is the planter. The Bible calls it a zira. A zira. What is that? That is a seed. It is the seed, and the woman receives the seed that's going to cut off the devil's head. Oh, y'all better come on and talk to me. And the devil knows that if I can just keep the women with low self-worth, if I can just keep the women preoccupied. 
If I could just keep the women working two and three jobs trying to make the family work, then I can keep her off her prayer bones. That's going to take my head off. Oh, y'all better come on and talk to me. But can somebody shout out to that devil today? The devil, you a liar. <laughs> Just like this red carpet that's running down this aisle, the Spirit of God told me to tell every woman in this place to take a stand for God and set a blood demarcation to the enemy and say, devil, you will not have my husband. Devil, you will not have my son. Devil, you will not have my father. Oh, why y'all so quiet? I want you to make a declaration today. Devil, you will not have my man child. I told God, I said, we've given too much. Even in our own family, the Miles family, we lost the prince. We lost the Tehran. And I fell on my knees. I said, God, no. Not another seed. Not another one, not another one. Not, oh, 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 devil, you're not going to have my son. You're not going to have Mosea. You're not going to have Malik. You're not going to have my children. Y'all better give God some praise up in here. Somebody needs to say, devil, just like pastor, you ain't going to have my son. You're not going to have my husband. Somebody give the Lord a Shabbat up in here. Oh my God, I'm about to run. I'm about to lose my mind up in here. The enemy wants to break your heart, ladies. To make you unfit. My brother, my sister, I hope y'all got that. Remember that you can get the whole sermon on DVD or CD. Amen. We are here, amen, to get you to your next. Amen. Spirit of living God, I thank you for my brother, my sister that has tuned in. You have allowed them to tune in to this word. Lord, I pray that it has brought about a transformation. As you have allowed us to revamp the temple, I ask that their mind, that their body, even their well-being would be revamped by the Spirit of God. Lord, I pray for reconciliation. I pray for rejuvenation. I pray for the spirit of repentance. You said a broken spirit and a contrite heart you would not despise. So Lord, I pray, amen, for repentance and a new beginning in Jesus' name. And let the church say, amen. All right, y'all. I just want you to take a look at this as you see new drums, my God, new pews. I'm telling you, they are gorgeous. New carpet, no more walking on wood. <laughs> new carpet, beloved. Oh my God, and we got some stripes, amen, representing, amen, the glory of God. Amen. We have also 
everything trimmed in red, representing the blood of Jesus himself. So that's what we have done for the glory of God. It is just gorgeous. So, beloved, I want you to come. If nothing else, just come and see. Remember this, what favor looks like. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can see favor now. Amen. God has blessed us. And I believe he is going to bless you. Amen. I just want you to get connected to what we are doing. We are not one of those churches that's just inside of the house. Oh, no. No, we outside. Amen. You can be a part if you're a senior over the age of 62. Oh, man, this is a place. Our award winning Miles Senior Housing Complex. If you are a vet over the age of 30 and you want a safe environment, clean, award winning facility, the Gary L. Miles Veterans Facility is for you. Uh, if you need an apartment, just call. We're full, but call. Get on the waiting list in our luxury apartment, condominiums on the block. And we have state-of-the-art, beautiful, just been redone, a social service facility, amen, that will deal with your everyday needs. That's what we do. That's how we, we roll. That's how we handle our business how reverend by ending things in your life and beginning some things in your life amen you know god knows the end from the beginning so we believe we are operating amen in the perfect will of god to end some things in your life if you are willing and obedient according to isaiah 119 you're going to eat the good of the land Amen. So you got to make a move to bring about some change in your life. So I want you to be a part. Remember, 11 a.m., you want to be at the International Gospel Center and see what we're doing. Like I just said, we're not just a church, amen, inside of the house. We have affected change for eight blocks for the glory of God. You just got to come and see what favor looks like. Amen? So until next time, you don't have nothing to fear. All you need is faith in God. God bless you.